I'm Alex Costa. I'm a tech lead engineer at Farfetch. And today we'll be talking a little bit about uh, NISI integration testing using Postman and Newman. It's actually how we are doing it in Farfetch or some teams in Farfetch are doing it. So one of the things that we should do first is actually see what types of tests there are. So we are doing integration testing, but what does that actually mean? So let's go to the internet and search for uh, test types in, for software development. And we find this website and we go to softwaretestinghelp.com. And then we get a list of tests. We go with alpha testing, acceptance testing, ad hoc testing, accessibility, beta testing, backend. Okay, there are definitely a lot of tests. Maybe this is not exactly what we are looking for. Okay, so again, let's go to the internet. Take two, let's search for new tests. This time we go to Acker.io and we have functional testing and non-functional testing. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We have for the functional testing, we have unit testing, mm -hmm. integration testing, there we go. End-to-end -end testing, smoke testing, sanity testing, regression testing, acceptance, white box, break interface. Yeah, this is not going as expected. So oh, scratch that, we just asked John Doe what types of tests there are. There are basically three types of tests. We have unit testing, performance testing, and integration testing. Let's simplify. So unit testing, what is unit testing? For every class, we mock the dependencies, we call each method and make sure they behave as expected. Simple, but why do we wanna do this? Basically, we want to validate the implementation that we did, and we wanna test the edge cases, the edge cases by method. And the key feature here is automation. So this is a sneak peek inside Farfetch Jenkins pipeline, build pipeline. And we have there a step called unit tests. And the idea there is just simply run the unit tests every time you make a new deploy and making sure everything is working as expected. So from our list of tests, now we have performance testing. What is performance testing? Basically for every server, we test I workloads with different durations. Why do we wanna do this? We want to validate the resilience of our service. So here we have a snapshot, in this case, from New Relic. And these are four instances that we had, um, we had performance tests running in our service. On the bottom left side, for instance, we can see that normally we have around 50K, 50K requests per minute, and suddenly they, those jump to 150. So simple uh, performance tests. OK, so now for what we are here to talk about, integration testing. So let's just make a quick recap with a door example. So we have a door, simple door. We actually wanna do unit testing to the door. So what can be unit tests to the door? The door opens, the door closes, the door stays open if no force is applied and the door stays closed if it's locked. Cool. So we have performance tests on the door. I know this is weird, but just go with it. Uh, the door allows passage with a rate of 60 people per minute, okay. The door allows passage at two people at the same time, okay? And if you can imagine some more tests, just add them there. Okay, so the door works. Yeah, we have unit tests that prove that the door works. Performance tests, it works very efficiently. Now let's put two doors together. Simple, right? Except not. So once again, why do we want to do integration tests? We want to validate the, how the system works end to end, making sure it behaves how we want. So how are we going to do this? We are making requests to our APIs and validate their responses. Simple. Yeah, but uh, how? How are we going to do this? Well, Postman got you covered. We have Postman collections. I'm sure that all of you are very familiar with this UI. So on the left side, we have the collections panel. And on the collections panel, collections are grouped by collections, folders, and requests. So here we can arrange however we want. So this is when you click on a request, this is what a request looks like. On the top, we have the type of request, in this case, a post, and with its URL. And then right now we have selected the body tab. So uh, all, the, all the JSON file there is what we are going to send in the body on the request of the body, on the body of the request. Uh, so what we are looking at right now is the tab called tests. So when we make a request, any code that is there will be run. And in this case, we are validating the request uh, worked as expected or add the behavior that we had expected. Quick note, on the right side, we have these multiple snippets. These snippets uh, are very handy 
for a lot of features that we for a lot of tasks that we want to do regularly when doing uh, whatever tests. So something that's important to, to notice here is that there are a lot of features around these tests, and there's actually a pipeline for, for the requests to be executed. So in the middle, we have the request, and then we get the response. But before, as we've seen, as we've seen we have the collections, the folders, and the requests. So these are uh, hierarchies. And uh, in those steps, you can actually add prescripts. And those scripts will run before every collection, before every folder, and before every request. So this is very useful if you need to somehow make some preparations for creating elements or destroying some, some entities that you created previously or getting access tokens or something like that. So these are very handy for the overall testing purpose. So if you are, or when you are going to do uh, integration tests, make sure you check the Postman Learning Center. There's a lot of information there. This is just plain JavaScript. This is very easy to do. Uh, we actually use the chain assertion library or Postman uses. And there's a lot of documentation, very simple and very, um, very, uh, blah, blah driven, use case driven, and you should definitely look at that before starting doing your tests. So we make the request and then we get the response. When we get the response on the bottom, there's actually a tab called test results. And this test results will show you for each test, if it passed or it failed and the name of the tests. So once again, as always, naming tests is very important so you can easily know where the test failed. So right now, we, in this case, we have some tests written on the right side, and on the left side, we have the, the response, the validation of the response. So once again, make sure to check, to check the documentation and take advantage of all its features, because the documentation is very, very simple and very good. So now you tell me, do you have multiple environments? Postman got you covered, once again, with Postman environments. So on the top right side of our UI, you have there the no environments. If you just press on that, if you click on that dropdown, you get a list of all your environments. In this scenario, we have our ITEs, which are the integrated testing environments. Uh, we have multiple slots inside those ITEs, and we have the localhost when we are developing locally. So an environment looks like this. This is the, the local the localhost environment. We have a set of variables on the left side, and we have the initial values and the current values if we keep updating them. But basically, we are saying that the variable on the left side, the key on the left side, will, sub will be substituted by the value on the right side. So if we go once again to our request, you can see on the top, on the URL, we have the protocol, which is, since we are in localhost, the environment localhost says it's HTTP. And then we have all the other, the other keys that are always uh, between uh, calibrators, two calibrators on each side. Also, this doesn't... Uh, this is for any part of Postman, so either the URL, the bodies, the tests, whatever you want. Also, the prescripts over there. So very handy if you are using multiple environments. And I say, yeah, but I don't work alone. I have a team. So yeah, once again, Postman got you covered with the workspace. You can have multiple teams, multiple workspaces. And what's awesome there is that when anyone makes any change, this will be synced up between the entire team. So it's very, very easy to collaborate and uh, keeping, uh, keep making improvements on your API and improving your, your tests. OK, wait. In the last picture, we had 282 request tests. Are we supposed to request each one by hand? How about no? Of course not. Postman has the Postman collection runner. Collection runner can be found on the top left it, on the runner button. You just press there and it opens the collection runner. The collection runner allows you to select the collection that you want to run. And then you have some, some keys, some uh, properties there, like selecting the environment. You can be testing locally or uh, any other environment. You can run multiple iterations. You can add delays, for instance, for cache synchronization or something like that. Um, and on the right side, in this case, we have multiple collections that we have run before, some that failed, some that passed. If you click on them, you can easily understand what was going on back then. So also, when you are about to run a collection, if there are like a lot of, a lot of requests, you can just select a bunch of them so you can make the, the collection run faster. When you click the run tests, basically, this is the summary uh, in the end. It will show all the tests that were executed. You can also expand them and see the actual calls and the actual bodies. 
And here we can see if the test failed, if the test passed, and if the test failed, it, you'll know exactly where to look for. Okay, this is all the fine and dandy, but this is inside Postman. Yes, we love Postman, but it's still inside Postman. How do we automate this? Postman got you covered once again. Newman. Newman is basically a command line collection runner for Postman. So it will do what we just seen, but in a command line. Okay, so how do we use this? First, we need to install it. npm install Newman with brew, with yarn. This is everywhere. So it's very easy to get. Um, and after we have the and we have to have the um, the package, we need to export the collection that we want to run. So triple dots export. We also want to export the environment. So in this case, we are testing against the IT default slot and go there and download. And then we are ready for Newman run the collection that we just exported and the environment that you just exported. Simple. And then your 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 terminal starts showing up a lot of lights and text. And basically it's calling one by one all the requests, making all the tests and showing the response uh, on the flight of, of what's going on. So while the while it's running, in the end, you have a little uh, small table. If you are familiar with uh, JavaScript tests or React test jest or something like that, it will be very similar to it. So you have like a little, a little summary of what was going on. So in those 282 tests, we actually have 532 assertions. So a lot of tests going on for this little service. Um, also, when again, when any test fails, uh, you have their fail tests. And if you name your test correctly, you will easily find out where it failed and why it failed. So last step, we need to add Newman to our pipelines. Once again, sneak peek inside Farfetch build pipeline. In the end, we have there a test system step. So what is a test system step? Basically, it's an environment with the service and the test running, and all its services are either mocked or are also running. So Jenkins also has a, has a the console application, has, has everything. You can just tell him to execute a lot of, a lot of commands. We tell him to install Newman. We tell him to, to run the collection, and there we go. We have the tests running automated in our pipeline. So simple. So quick recap of what we did. Created the collections, created the, the environments. We have written the tests for all in the test step. We have exported the collections, and then we run the collections that just created with the, with the target environment. Yes? OK, but wait. Are you telling me that we have to manually export every time that we create a new test? Of course not. You don't need to do that. So there's actually a Postman API where we just get an API for, for our application, uh, for our uh, workspace. And then we can ask Postman to give your last, uh, your most updated collection. So every time we run our, our, our pipeline, we just get the latest collection, latest tests. We can also do this for the environments and whatever you need and just automatically run the most updated version of the tests in the pipeline every time you run it. So quick recap once again, create the collections, create the environments, write the tests, and uh, run the pipeline. Actually, that should not be there. So that's the first time setup. And when we are just developing the development loop, we would just need to write new tests. And with the API call, we will just run always the, the latest tests. So any question, guys? Thanks, Alex. I'm looking through. I don't see any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat or Slido. And also, just a reminder, with Slido, I, there is a, um, a quick survey just about this session, um, if you'll take time to, to respond to the survey. Alex, you always like you stopped me. Uh, you got me all uh, not frustrated, but I was just like, "Huh, oh, there's Postman API." And, you were talking about <laughs> questions and then you and then you went there. So living, was living the part for the end, yeah. <laughs> also, I want to add just a little, a little bit. Sorry for the no T-shirt. Uh, it's supposed to arrive in like four hours, but uh, yeah, delivery guys, you know, they are slow. It's okay. I wasn't supposed to get mine either. So <laughs> I, 
I got it early, but it wasn't supposed to be here till later today as well. So we do have a question. Um, are there any challenges for tests at scale with this setup? API for what, sorry? Hundreds or are there any challenges for tests at scale with the setup that you described? The tests at scale, what do you mean with that? Uh, API tests that range in the hundreds or the thousands. Uh, okay, uh, cannot say. I would say that it probably just takes longer. Um, but the idea is, try, is to try to validate your business logic. So maybe you can make like separate collections for that and just wait for it to run. But I'm guessing not. For performance testing, no. This is not the idea. This is for testing logic and testing the business. So it works and went. For performance testing, you should never use this. Hope it was cool. clear. <laughs> uh, and then one more. I've been given collections with variables tied to the collection rather than the environment. How do I see those? Tied to the collection? Uh, is there any way that I can see the questions? No. Uh, it's in the chat um, to your, if you see the chat panel on your right. Oh, I, then I can see that one. Sorry. Can you repeat the question? Yep. I've been given collections with variables tied to the collection rather than the environment. How do I see those? I actually don't know. I always use the environments for setting the collections. Yeah, and, or the data. I don't talk about the data, but there's also a data that you can actually add here. But that's weird. Yeah, there are. So there's glow. There's the the notion of global environments, and that maybe that's what they're. Yeah, maybe we when you use the PM set and PM get and stuff, and you can create on the flight. But I'll, if I'm not mistaken, if at any time, so you have an environment set. And anytime if you make a pm.set and you write a new name, so a name that is not on the environment, it will actually appear on the environment. Appear in the environments, correct. Yep, yep. I just did that yesterday, actually. So I know that that works that way. Yeah. So, but if it's scattered everywhere, yeah, that, that might be troublesome. So this is one thing that it's important to call out attention to. So plan your tests wisely and use the folders wisely. Like, for instance, in our case, we use each folder is for a topic. So we want to, in this case, we are an experimentation team. One of the parts is uh, creating the, testing the creation of the experiments. So we have one folder just for the testing, for the creation of the experiment. Then we have another one for like creating, uh, set, changing the state, changing properties, and then deleting it. Then we, like, we have multiple folders for similar stuff. But make sure you plan those correctly because they can easily get scattered everywhere. Yep. Uh, and then there was a final question about um, using Postman for load testing. Um, I think you were you, you were referring just to that technique that was mentioned mm -hmm. in answering the question for load testing. But in general, Postman is not a great load testing tool. Um, I think there's some other other tools that you can really um, that would be preferable for yeah. Postman for that specific use case. In, in our case, just to say it. In our case, we use JMeter. It's pretty straightforward. G Yep. Um, so those tests that you see in there were done were executed with JMeter. But again, Postman, the you can you can always do like this this type of integration testing with C Sharp. It, it, it's also perfectly doable. The thing is with Postman, it's just that easy to maintain and to create new tests and to validate them. It's very 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 simple to just make new tests. Yep. All right. Uh, this session is actually over time, and I've got another session, so I'm going to have to hop off. I know there's a couple of other questions, and I think those questions would actually, if you go to um, the Postman uh, booth in the expo hall, those would be great questions to ask the Postman folks there. Um, Alex, again, thank you for, for thank taking you, the time. Eddie. Thank you, guys, for arranging this and uh, giving me this opportunity, man. Yep, great. absolutely. All right. We'll see everybody at the next session. Bye -bye.